Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a nice game to share with you between Ossip Bernstein, playing on the white end, and the great Jose Raul Capablanca. This one was played many moons ago, 1914, and is a game I recall first reviewing as an amateur player, and being drawn to it primarily for the final tactical move. Uh, only later, revisiting this game as a much more experienced player, master level player, did I acquire a far greater appreciation for it primarily because of the great explanation Capablanca gives to a particular move, a new idea or train of thought, one that would have an influence on future chess greats, such as Bobby Fischer. Uh, so in short, as an amateur, the final tactical move overshadowed the wonderful explanation given by Capablanca to a particular move. So let's dive in and see how this one plays out, and well, let's see how this one strikes you. d4 by Bernstein, the chess machine replying with d5. We have a queen's gambit declined, and okay, the minor pieces are flying out. Black going forward with a queenside fianchetto. A slight change in the structure, and now queen to a4. This is preparing a light square bishop exchange. White is already uh, anticipating a structural shift. White is anticipating an eventual uh, hanging pawns structure, a d5, c5 structure, and typically when playing against the hanging pawns, you do well to seek peace exchanges. And uh, that's usually a good way to uh, show that the hanging pawns are a liability. So that's what we have. Light square bishop's gone. C5. White goes forward with an additional minor piece exchange. A bit of a debatable move as white is giving up the bishop for knight. But uh, okay, after d takes c, b takes c, this is where we stand. Hanging pawn structure. These guys will require the support of the black pieces. And we're also working with two minor pieces apiece. Castles, queen b6. White has no interest in the queen exchange. You could go for this, but apparently did not want to even allow the rook to c along the a-file. So instead, white ducks, queen to e2. And now here's this uh, new idea by Capablanca, this new move. c4. Uh, this, you know, immediately, as soon as I see that c4 move, I think, oh, uh, you just gave white that d5 square. but. Uh, there are also uh, positives connected with this C4 move, and I do best at this point to simply share uh, Capablanca's explanation for the move C4. Uh, he says, White's plan from the start was to work against the weakness of Black's hanging C and D pawns, which must be defended by pieces. The general strategy for such positions is for white's rooks to occupy the C and D files, attacking black's hanging pawns, while black's rooks defend these pawns from the rear. The awkward position of black's bishop at E7 rendered it useless, except for the purpose of defending the pawn on C5. It is against such strategy on the part of white that the text move C4 is directed. By it, the defensive bishop becomes an attacking piece since the long diagonal is open to him, and what is more important, White's b-pawn is fixed and weakened and becomes a source of worry for White, who has to defend it also with pieces, and thus cannot use those pieces to attack the black hanging pawns. The fact that the text move opens the d4 square for one of the white knights is of small consequence, since if White posts a knight there, his attack on black's d5 pawn is blocked for the moment, and thus black has time to assume the offensive. I just find that to be a wonderful explanation. Uh, and this idea, this train of thought, had an impact on, as mentioned, uh, Bobby Fischer. He's not the only one, but I've included in the description to this video a wonderful game that supplements uh, very well uh, Capablanca's explanation here. Uh, regarding the hanging pawns and this c4 move. So feel free to check that out, especially if you happen to be a, a chess instructor reviewing this video right now, and you want to discuss the hanging pawn structure. This is a must. 
this is uh, definitely something to share. So continuing here, we have exactly uh, this pressure against d5. It's defended knight to d4. So as Capablanca pointed out, you could post a piece on d4, but now there's less worry about defending the d5 point directly. So it's like you could do one of the two, but not both at the same time. You can either occupy d4 with the knight or attack d5 directly with the rook, but not both. Meanwhile, this uh, b pawn has some pressure on it. It's a bit more of a static uh, point. And, well, also, also uh, Capablanca pointed out that the bishop can now become an attacking piece. With c4 now in, he has a couple options. He's exerting pressure on the c3 knight. b3 is the follow-up. Rook on a to c8. Chop, chop. And now we have a passed pawn. C pawn. This is an equal position. But, um, yeah, it's white. Who has to be a bit more careful. Black already having this passed pawn, and uh, there's this four versus three majority that white has, but uh, this definitely is something that white, white is focused on right now. How to, how to make sure that this guy doesn't get out of control. Bishop takes knight, rook takes, now knight to d5. c3, just two steps away. Rook to c1. Rook to c5. This is an even position, and there's a little bit of back and forth right here. And now this is where white is kind of going in the wrong direction. Uh, knight to b5, rook to c5, and knight takes pawn is a serious blunder, as we will soon see. Uh, better for white at this stage is to simply uh, return to the d4 square and come up with something else, sneak in a flight square soon, hopefully. But uh, yeah, at this stage, white goes straight in for uh, this capture of the pawn, which allows this final uh, tactical sequence, this final key uh, blow in the position. And it follows with knight takes knight, rook takes knight, rook takes rook, rook takes rook. And a quick pop quiz to you. There's just one move Black plays from this position, and uh, white throws in the towel. And this is a position, I believe, multiple tactics books, uh, they share this position. And uh, yeah, it's a really good one. So if you'd like to go ahead, pause the video. What would you play here as black? Okay. There is, well, really for both sides, a an issue with the back rank. Neither side has a flight square. After Capablanca's move 29, queen to b2, that's the ball game. White throws in the towel. Why? Well, queen takes queen, runs into mate. What other variations to consider? Queen here, defending the rook, allows queen takes rook, and mate right around the corner. Just two other quick variations, queen to... Well, let's try this one first. Rook c2 can be met with queen b1, and then you simply pick up the rook, and then soon the queen. And lastly, if, let's say, queen c2, a couple of good things to do. You could take the queen, and if she's taken back, give mate. Or you could simply force mate after queen to c2 with queen a1, and after the queen block, we play rook d1, and that's going to be mate. So as mentioned, I thought that as an amateur player, this was really cool, but only later, as a much more experienced player, did I have a much greater appreciation for that little dialogue, that little explanation regarding the hanging pawns and that key uh, C4 move. So anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this one. Let me know what your thoughts are, and I will catch you in the next video. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.